Yeah, they, um, you, uh, you married somebody, right? I mean, besides your wife? No, I'm only. <laughs> yeah, he, he was here for a wedding and so on, so it's good to see them. Amen. Um, are you ready for the word? Let's try it again. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. Amen. You should get excited about the word. It is actually the only thing that we have that will help us to understand who God is, who you are, what the kingdom of God is all about. If you, it's, it's difficult to be a Christian and not know the word. Hello? Because at that point, if you don't know the word, you have no idea how you should live, what are your rights, what are the promises of God, all that good stuff. Amen? So if you, you, know, you can be a Christian for years and not know the word. And I promise you that if you don't know the word, then you're going to face issues and problems. Because remember when Jesus said this, he said, when the storm comes, he never said if it comes. When the storm comes, and it's amazing to me how many Christians, when the storm does come, they freak out. They're like, what's going on? Well, if you know the word, you know what's going on. No matter what the storm is, you have the victory. No matter what you face, God will see you through it. But you won't know that if you don't know the word. And that's why it's important for people to come to church, hear the word, right? Because the Bible says that the word, that the seed is the word of God. So I'm planting seeds. I'm sowing seeds. And it's, it's so important for you not only to hear it, but then to study it. If you don't have a Bible, get one. If, and really, you can get them free right online. Amen. And, but take notes and go like, okay, when I go home, I'm going to check this out. Because you know how many people are, are led astray because there's uh, people that preachers that preach the word of God for their convenience. I got to say it. And then people buy into it. Then they find out that it's not like the preacher said, so who are they going to blame? They're going to blame the preacher. And, and so before you blame me, do yourself a favor, get into the word. Because once you hear it, it will strengthen that word in you if you study it. Come on, you all here? Amen. Today's message, uh, the title is Speak with Purpose. Speak with Purpose. And the amazing thing is that all of us, that's all we do is talk. That's it. We talk. It'd be funny, right, if you go and, and, and see somebody and just go, you know, he's going to think you're crazy or that you can't speak. We always speak. Words are super important. Like I said uh, last week, it is the seed of the word of God. Some people say, well, why, how do I know what to say? Well, think about it, right? If the seed is the word of God, what should you be saying? What the word of God says. We have what we say, and then there's what the word says. And that's always our challenge. We're always going to uh, uh, deal with that. Where do you draw the line? What, what do I say? Do I say what my emotions are saying? Or do I say what the word of God is saying? Come on, somebody. Are you all here? Yes. The word seed um, is, the, is the Greek word sperma. So, yeah, you got it. It's where we get the word sperm. So the word will impregnate you. Boy, nothing. <laughs> Amen. Think about it. Every time you speak, it has the power to get you pregnant. Yes, you too, men. Yeah. Because the word of God is designed in a way that it, is, it will grow gradually. And this is the thing. How, when did you see a, a woman get pregnant and give birth the next day? It doesn't work like that. People want the word to work overnight. It doesn't work like that. When you get it, 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 you, you get pregnant, and then as you continue to speak that word, at some point, that word is going to give birth. Come on. 
Are y'all here? So important. I mean, everything has to do with, with the word. You know, uh, words can empower or words can tear down. Are y'all here? Words can change a nation or destroy a nation. All, all we have to do is listen to the words coming out of the crooked media. Whatever the media says, people believe. If the media says, hey, uh, what's in style now is wearing uh, whatever, weird stuff, people buy into it. If the media says, even though the economy may be good and it is good to kingdom people, hello, if they say it's not good, people believe it. What is the media doing? Planting seeds. You think the enemy doesn't understand this whole thing? Come on. And, when, and you know, you just watch the media or whatever they say, and you repeat what they say. So now you are now getting pregnant with negative seeds. Come on. The Bible talks about, uh, um, it talks about bad seed. The, the, Greek, the Greek name of a bad seed is Darnell. Hello? And literally means bastard seed. Oh, you're not here. Come on. You can speak the in, in incredible, uh, 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 indestructible seed of the word of God, or you can speak a bastard seed. A bastard seed is a seed that is not coming from God. Come on. Oh, yeah, I know I'm on it now. Your silence tells me that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so uh, uh, words are the essence of a relationship. You, depending on what you say, you, it, it could be a blessing or you say something that will cause problems. None of us know about that. Yeah. You know, all it takes is the wrong word. And your spouse is going to be upset. True? And somebody says, well, you got to speak the truth. Yeah, the Bible says speak the truth in love. So, so it's, yeah, speak the truth, but you have to do it in a way that is planting biblical seed instead of saying something based out of anger or emotions or fear. Are you all here? That has caused more problems than anything, and people don't know it, that one of the major issues in, in marriage it's not finances, it's not any of that, it's how people talk to each other. Oh, this is a freebie for y'all. If you're not married yet and you think you're getting married, you better take notes. Amen. Because a lot of what happens in a marriage has to do with what you say. Words are so powerful, the Bible says, right, that the what? The power of life and death. Say power. Power, the power of life and death is in the tongue. So nothing will, I, God forbid, that in a marriage one spouse physically hits another spouse, right? That, that should never happen. That should never happen. I'll say it again. That should never happen. But I want you to know that what you say can be more destructive, because a physical thing will hurt, but words will penetrate inside the heart is a seed. Come on, somebody. And that, will, that can destroy a marriage like that. Amen. Hallelujah. So now you say the right words, which is not how you feel even, but the right words is what the Bible says. So if you don't know what the Bible says... Come on. But when you know what the Bible says, you will speak in love and you will speak life, not death. And you will speak prosperity, not, not being broke. You, you will speak that which the word says about your spouse. We are one. Come on. Right? And as Christ loved the church, I love you. Oh, y'all not here. Amen. Okay, let me close in prayer. Amen. So, 
Are we sowing incorruptible seed of God's word or, again, seeds of our feelings or emotions? In, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. How were you born again? Through the word of God. Come on, somebody. Right? And it's imperishable. It is incorruptible, meaning that nothing can change that word. Nothing can mess up that word. The only one that can mess up the truth is us. Because God has given us the ability to speak. Amen. Come on. The, remember with Adam, he said, you now name the animal. So he had to name them. He had to speak to every animal. He gave them the power of making decisions. Come on. Right? And there's power in, in your words when you decide to say, guess what? I'm going to say what God's word says and not what I think. Because our problem a lot of times in, is in how we think. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And you will never say anything you're not thinking about. Come on. You know, the problem a lot of times is that we hold, we hold it in. And then it comes out at the wrong time and it comes out in anger and so on. And that doesn't help anything. Are you, are you with me? Right? You have to remember that, that words are prophetic in nature. Meaning that what you say may be fulfilled. Like you'll, you'll be saying, I'll, I'll, never, I'll never get out of debt. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never. Okay. Then you won't. Because words are prophetic. What you're doing is you're prophesying to yourself that you're never going to get it out, out of debt. You're prophesying to yourself that your marriage is never going to, to uh, work. You're prophesying. And when you prophesy, my friend, it will come to pass. Yes. Come on. Yes. So we have to speak with purpose. Look at your neighbor. I never do this. I actually don't like to do this. But I'll do it this time. <laughs> Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's about to get hot. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I just got to prepare you, you know. Yeah, I got to prepare your mindset. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. You brood of vipers. By the way, he's talking to the Pharisees. Amen. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Next verse. A good man brings good things out of the good, good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. I told you it was about to get hot. Get the fans out. Just, Amen. But listen to what it's saying. What, oh, yeah. Thank you. Now go back. Go, go. Go forward. For by your words, by your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. Now, how is it that the church does not understand the power of words when we read these scriptures that tells us specifically, come on, that, that, now somebody says, you know, so if I say something wrong, what does that mean? I'm glad you asked that because they just said it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That simply means that you have been saying the wrong thing for so long that you can't help it. Hello? Uh, you're going to speak what is inside of you. So we understand that words work from the inside out. Come on. The, the right words will change your life. Come on. Now notice it says that, that, that a, good, a, good, a good tree or a good man. So what does that mean? Well, we go back to last week and I was sharing the, par the, the parable of the sower. 
And it talks about good soil. Only the good soil will produce, what, 30, 60, 100 fold. So a good man is a man that has good soil. Come on. I got to walk you through this. So, so how do you get good soil? Very simple. Number one, you have to have faith in the word of God. Number two, you have to say what the word of God says. Because remember, what you're saying is filling you up. Oh, you're not hearing me. See, that's why people, they, they, they can go off. Because they'll sit up under, let's say, uh, New Age teaching. And now they, they, they're taking it in, taking it in. They're being filled up with that. What are they going to say? The same thing that they be, they're learning. You have to understand cults are like that. You have to understand people who go like, how is it that those people that went out to Africa and they drank the Kool-Aid? Remember that? Right? Well, you have, why? Because they sat under words that filled them up to the point where now they had no control. So that's why Jesus said, be careful what you hear because by the measure that you hear it, and, and we're so irresponsible, guys, because we will listen to men, the media, and so on, and we will take all that stuff in, and now it is in you in abundance. Come on. And that's why the media could control us, because we've heard it so much, you know, that when they say jump, we jump. Hello? We have to know what the Word of God says. We have to be filled of the word and you will find out if you're full of the word when you hear that stuff you know it's wrong come on you know it quickly you go like uh uh no as good as it sounds or you're an expert are you I don't care what kind of expert you are that's not right Come on, why? Because you're full of the word. You understand what the word says, and you, and you realize, wait a minute, if I agree with this person, then I get away from the word of God. Come on. Now, remember, we will say it. What? Oh, my God, Illinois is the worst. Six dollars for a gallon of gas. And then we'll, we'll say it. Yeah, man. Now, we're all guilty of it. Don't even look at me strange. Yeah, we are all guilty. I say all, I'm including me, right? Because I never get up here trying to tell you something that, like, I conquered it. Uh, I'm learning it just as I'm telling you. And God is speaking to me just like he's speaking to you. We all do it. And we, it, it, it's, it's like that's coming out of, ready? That's coming out of an evil Come on. It's coming out of evil. Why? What does evil even mean? It means, in the Greek, hurtful, malicious, idle, empty. It has no substance. It is what they're saying. And, and once we repeat it and repeat it over and keep saying, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, you know if we're going to have enough money in this economy. Uh, oh, my God, there's a what? Recession coming. That's the same as famine. You know, oh my God, this, and you keep repeating it, my friend. That is inside of you. And now, because it's prophetic, even though God's word says, if a hundred fall on your, on your left and a thousand on your right, it won't touch you. And we'll go like, oh, I'm being touched by the economy. I can't give, I can't give, I can't. What? Come on, y'all. We have to realize that we are in a very crucial place. And, and it baffles me how much the church, not just our church, but the church in general, has bought into the lies of this world system. And the way you know they bought into it is because of what they say. Hey. So he says, for by your words you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. God doesn't condemn nobody. We realize that. Yes? God doesn't condemn anyone. Who condemns you? You. Your words will bring condemnation to you. 
Because you're saying the wrong thing. You're not saying what God is saying. Why? Because we're so used to uh, 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 reacting. We're more used to reacting than responding. We are reactive folks. Something happens, boom, you react. And what you say at that point, my friend, is just strengthening what you don't like. Okay? This is probably the most difficult thing that we deal with. I can tell you that the devil is, is no good, that he's defeated, that, you know, this and that and the other. And, you, and you're like, yes, you'll get excited. I can deal with that. I can tell you how the promises of God are yes and amen, and you will get excited. Yes, I receive that. But when somebody says, let's talk correctly, let's speak with real purpose, Ooh, watch it. It was James that said, you know, he said that the, the smallest thing that you possess, he says, your tongue, he says, is a fire. Oh, you're not hearing me. He said, with the same tongue, you worship God, and with the same tongue, you curse your brother. It is the most destructive thing or the most powerful blessing that you and I possess, and we leave it alone. We don't even deal with it. Come on. And then we don't realize when Jesus said, I've come to give you life, and life what? More abundantly, and we go, well, where's that life? You know, he said, I'm still waiting on it. Well, hear what you're saying. Where is it? If you don't know you have it and you don't confess that you have it, you don't have it. If you're saying, I'm still looking for it, keep looking till you die. You're not going to find it because the answer is right beneath your nose. Oh, you're not hearing me. It is the most challenging discipline of a believer. And you know I'm saying the truth. Because right after this service, you will go out and watch what you say. But it's okay. There's no condemnation. You know, but the Bible's saying, look, you're going to hurt yourself. Right? You're going to hurt yourself if you say the wrong thing. So what do you do? I shared it last, last, uh, last Sunday. You cancel the wrong things that you say. You have that authority. Let's say you, 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 right after this, you say, man, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to make it financially this month. Whoop! I canceled that thought. I cancel that word. You have the right to do that. Now, I would assure you there's going to be a lot of canceling going on. <laughs> I'm serious. But it doesn't matter how many times you have to do it. Just do it. You have to cancel the power and authority of a negative seed. Because if you don't do it, it will grow. The nature of a seed is to grow. Are you all here? Amen and amen. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. You have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. Wow. It's like a setup. It's a trap. You don't realize that's, that's what's happening, but you're being trapped by your own words. You're being ensnared by your own words. Come on, somebody. That's why we have to cancel it right away. As soon as Holy Spirit shows you, you take that thought captive and you cancel that word. And God says, good for you. Because now you're no, no longer in trap. Now, the, now realize this, that the power of Satan is in what? What he says. Come on. The Bible says that he is a liar. No, the father of lies. And, and the way that he got to Adam and Eve was how? Words. Come on. Right? The words. Do you realize that, that he is always speaking to you indirectly? As a matter of fact, you think it's you, but it's been his influence. Come on. He has the influence in this world system. And a lot of times, you're talking to yourself in your mind. Some of us, more than others, will literally spend like, man, 20 minutes or more just 
boom, 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 boom. And, and all those words that are spoken in our minds are contrary to the word of God, right? So we have to change that. We have to hear the, the word of the Lord and the voice of Holy Spirit telling you, yes, you're going to succeed. Come on. Yes, you're not going to stay poor. Yes, your marriage is, is, is good. Now, remember, one of the kingdom uh, principles is the, is the principle of now. So you should never talk futuristic. You should never say, well, someday my marriage is going to be good. No, it has to be now. Faith is now. When you speak, you don't speak it when you feel it or when you see it. You speak it when? Now. Because your inner man is going to respond to what you say right now. Are you all with me? Amen. Proverbs 21, verse 23. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Now, remember, I can tell you what I think, and I can tell you, you know, my philosophy or whatever. It means nothing. My opinion is worth diddly squat to you, really. But you see it in the word. It is clear. The, most, uh, 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 the man of the most wisdom, Solomon, is saying, yo. Now, he don't say yo, but if he was around today, he would. He says, yo, guard your mouth. Guard your mouth. He says, and your tongue, keep, whoever does that keeps themselves from calamity. So watch this. A lot of times we have calamity and we say, well, the devil this or whatever. Or No, no, no. Sometimes it's because you have been snared by your own mouth. Yay. I mean, this whole thing brings perspective into the kingdom of God. And I will walk with God because we, we realize that if I have the power to bring calamity in my life through my mouth, I also have the power to bring blessings into my life with my mouth. I have to speak blessings. It doesn't matter how I feel, what, ha what has happened. I have to speak life. I have to speak blessing. I have to say, you know what? The word of God is true. No matter how I see, no matter what I just experienced, but the word of God is true. And you say the word of God instead of how you feel. Ooh, what a challenge, baby. Yep. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. We know it. And it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, talking about Abraham. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead, and here it is, and calls into being things that were not. So if you base what you say on what is, you're just reaffirming the lie. I mean, it's normal. We, 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 it's the way we operate. Like something will happen and we'll talk to each other. Man, look at this. Whew. I don't know, man. That's an obstacle. I don't know. Come on. Are you with me? He said, speak those things that are not. So he ain't, he's not lying. He's, he's not saying, uh, no, that's not real. No, this is not happening. He says, no, 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 speak those things that are not as though they are. We can speak things into existence. Now, they're not coming out of nowhere. They're coming from the manifestation of his word. Because the Bible says that he watches his word to what? To perform it. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, wake, wake up the person next to you. Give them a little, mm. Yeah, amen. So, what are we speaking? Are we speaking what is? Well, pastor, you got to keep it real, pastor. The reality is, yes, that's the reality of the world. 
And you're always going to have that. But the reality of the kingdom is different. God has given you the victory. You are an overcomer. He has given you the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He has given you all of this. That is the kingdom life. Now, if you want to stick to a reality that has to do with the world system, that's up to you. But then you can't complain about it because you're giving yourself to it. Or you're speaking what they're saying instead of what the kingdom is saying. Are you with me? Amen. Yikes. <laughs> Psalms 19, 14. May these words, this is a song we used to sing. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Come on. May these words of my mouth. Now remember that whatever you say over and over again is meditation. Hello? And whatever you meditate is what goes in here. So the more you saying it's not going to work, you're meditating. And meditation always will bring results, good or bad. Come on. Right? The Lord told, uh, uh, um, what's his name? <laughs> Max and you you're like. <laughs> uh, right in the tip of my tongue. Who? Yes. Thank you. Come on. Give that man a clap offering. <laughs> so he, he told Joshua, in order to su succeed, you have to meditate on my word when? Day and night. Now, you have to understand that that principle works either way. Because the word med meditation means to murmur. And it says that the children of Israel could not enter into the prom promised land because all they did in the wilderness was what? Murmur. You're not here. And that word murmur means to repeat the same thing over and over again. But they were, what they were repeating was the wrong thing. You're not helping me. They kept repeating the problem. They kept repeating that they had no water, that they had no food. They kept saying that God wasn't providing for them. Come on, somebody. They meditated, in, on, they meditated on that so long that by the time they got to the promised land, they could not get into the promised land because they talked themselves out of it. Come on. Yeah. Now, the, the proper meditation is on the word of God. Every morning I get up and I do my thing. I, I told you I get up. I, I, don't, I tell the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, I'm not just waking up. I'm rising up. And then I just go through it. I rise up to your mercies that are new every morning. I rise up to the healing power of Jesus Christ. And by his stripes, I am healed. And by his stripes, I am healed. And by his stripes, I am healed. I'm saying it because it has to get in here. Come on. I thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. The world system does not provide for me. Man does not provide for me. You are my provider, and I thank you, Lord. What am I doing? I'm getting it in here. I'm getting it in my spirit, in my inner man. Why? Because now when I hit a wall, again, when the storm comes, not if, then what's going to come out of my mouth is what's in here out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. If you want to know what you have inside of you, hear how you react to a problem. Now, most of us, including myself, we may react wrong, but the key again is just catch it, cancel it, and move on. Are y'all here? That's the key. Who said that Christianity, uh, it, it, you know, is simple? Oh, you don't work. God does all the work. They lie to you. And because uh, if you believe that, it means you have not been in the word. Come on. This is work. It's good works. 
that you have bad works and you have good works. Bad works is when you do something in your own power and in your own intellect. Good works is when you do it by faith and you trust God and you speak the word of God. Come on, somebody. Right? Well, praise the Lord. So, the key to speaking right, I just have a few, a few hours, no, a few moments. The key to speaking right is this. Jot it down. It's going to help you. It is the attitude of gratitude. Now, Thanksgiving in November, the holiday, has been detrimental to the attitude of gratitude. Why? That is the only time for most people when they are grateful. And we get around that table with the turkey, come on, the stuffing, arroz con gandules. I mean, we, we, you know, and then we go around, say what you're thankful for. <laughs> Shoot, I'm thankful for this meal right here. <laughs> I'm thankful to God, you know. And, and then after that, we don't realize the power of thanksgiving. Come on. An attitude of gratitude, my friend, will help you to focus on what you should be grateful for today. Come on. Most people are focusing on what they don't have. The power of focus is incredible. Because whatever you focus on, that's the direction your life is going to go on. You, oh, come on, you're not here. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we, we typically speak the problem and speak what we don't have. Do you realize how much we have to be grateful for? Oh, yes. So you can either meditate on, on what you don't have or meditate and focus on what you do. Do you realize that most of you know Norm and I had that, that car accident? Amen. And, um, you know, it was, it was terrible. It was terrible. But out of it, both, both Norm and I said, but we're grateful that God kept us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we lost a car that I was going to give in anyway. The lease was coming up. I was going to turn it in because we had two cars and we always use one. And so the, the car, the insurance paid it off. They sent me over seven grand. Come on, somebody. And we were still alive. Amen. And all we did was say, thank you, Lord, for keeping us. I don't care about the car. Cars come and go. Thank you that you, are, that you, 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 you saved us from, you know, amen. And do you realize a month later, maybe, we had a fire in our house. Most people don't even know it. Me and Norma watching television. All of a sudden, I'm like, Norma, something is burning. I go out the back door, and the side of the house is on fire. Yeah. And, you know, when that happens, you don't know. I'm going like this. I get a pot of water. <laughs> I go, and it just goes, but the flames are still going. I'm like, what in the world? Oh, you're not here. So, you know, thank God for our neighbor that had a hose. Now, this is the amazing thing. That fire is going. You don't turn that off with a garden hose. And, and she's going like this. She's screaming. Ah. I grabbed it from her. I'm trying. Blah, blah, blah. And it, it turned off the fire. You're not here. The, the air, the, the AC unit is what caused the fire. So we have no AC. 100 degree weather coming. When it gets too hot, which has been, we can't stay there. We have to go to a hotel. Come on, somebody. We've been in so many hotels, we forget where the bathroom is. Yeah, yeah. After a while, you get up and you, you're going in the closet. You think you're going in the, in the bathroom. <laughs> and you know what we say? Thank God. We're so grateful. 
Come on, somebody. We're so grateful that that, that fire didn't engulf the, the house. We're so grateful that we weren't sleeping during that fire. And, and oh, you're not hearing me. The attitude of gratitude, my friend, will always cause you to say the right thing. Because when you're grateful and you're thankful to God, what you speak is the mercy and the grace and the favor of God in your life instead of the problem. I could have said, oh, my God. Oh, my. What is going on? Norma, I don't know. God, where are you? God. I'm not going there. As a matter of fact, most people don't know. They go like, what? You've been through that? Yeah. I was telling Junior, you know, I said, that's what draws a lot of pastors to me. Because they say, this guy is unmovable. And in a time in the church where you see a lot of this, uh uh-uh, I don't care. We're going to stay right here. Amen. Amen. We're going to stay right here. We trust God. His word is true. It's impossible for me to say I'm a son of God and not believe his word. I have to stand on his word. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes I can have tears in my eyes. Sometimes I can, I, I can be angry, but I go, no, Lord, it's what you say. Well, you're not hearing me. Amen. But how, how did that happen? Because all of a sudden I decided, oh, I'm going to say the right thing. No, my friend, because it's in here. It's in here. And you have to realize that obstacles and calamity will happen, my friend. It's a way of life shift happens. Amen. So you got to be prepared. How do you prepare yourself? And do you realize how many Christians, they they react to the situation. And that's the time when they seek the Lord and they pray and so on. Then after the situation is taken care of, they go right back to stinking thinking. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on. You need to be prepared. And the only way you're going to be prepared is by getting the truth inside of you. Speaking the word of God. Speaking the word of God. I don't care if you're mad at your spouse. Speak the word of God. Come on. Okay, all those who who got excited, we're going to have counseling right after this. No, I'm only kidding. (laughs) Amen. So so the people, the children of Israel meditated on the wrong things. They meditated on complaining. It's so much easier to complain, and I've shared this before. The reason it's easy to complain is because it brings a measure of comfort. It's not biblical, but it does. Do you ever wonder when when, uh, somebody goes to anger management People, <laughs> people go to anger management. You know what the, the, the formula is? I got this pillow right here. I'm going to give you a bat. Beat that pillow up. Get it out. Get. Why? It works. Because it brings a measure of comfort. It's a release, but it's not kingdom. Are y'all here? It's not kingdom. You know, if, if, we, if we are dealing with anger and all that kind of stuff, the key, my friend, is to speak the opposite. You know, and, then, and then we go like, well, I have the right to be angry. No, you don't. Really? No, you don't. How do you have the right to be angry and still serve a God that died for you when you're at, at your worst? Come on. Do you realize when we become born again, we've lost all our rights? We don't like that. We don't like that. No, no, I got to hold on to this. I'm I'm willing to give this up, but this right here, I'm going to hold on to this one. Well, that's the one that you have to take care of on your own. Amen. So, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, do what? Think about these things. 
So the Bible is telling us what we should think on. And this is the problem, and I've shared it so many times, is that we've come from a place, uh, uh, the bloodline of fallen Adam. And, and fallen Adam uh, made a bad decision, him and Eve. Are y'all here? And on top of that, they made another bad decision by getting away from the father. Come on. But you know why they made that decision? Because they could. Whether bad or good, we have to make a decision. That is the, the thing i said so many times. That is the thing that makes us like God. Animals, they operate out of instinct. We're not animals, my friend. We operate from here. We have the mind of Christ. We make the decisions. And if you make a decision, listen to me, then your, your whole mind will follow that. So that's why the Bible says uh, all these things, the thing, by the way, they're, they're not crazy things. They're not things of the world. It's not talking about death. It's not talking about being poor. No, it, it talks about all these good things, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure. Think on these things. Why? Because we have the right to, the authority to think what we want to think. Amen. And when we don't do that, we give ourselves to think whatever our emotions say or whatever we see or whatever we hear. You're not here. In other words, you've lost authority. You've lost control of your life. Because, because now you are the sum of what other things and other people are saying. Come on. So you're watching the media, who is corrupt as all get out, and you agree with it. Oh, yeah, well, that's the way it is. No, it's not the way it is. Well, there's nothing we can do. That's not true. You are sons and daughters of the living God. Come on. God, the creator, he owns it all. But the minute you do that, you did think, but your thinking went to the default. It's the fallen Adam. Are you all here? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So whatever I think about, that's what's going to happen in my life. That's a discipline, my friend. It's a discipline. I have, to, I have to make a decision what I'm going to meditate on. And you are around people that don't have a clue about what we're talking about. So don't, don't lean on them. I don't care if they're a doctor or so-and-so. I don't care if they're professionals. Don't lean on what they're saying because they don't have an understanding of kingdom principles. Come on. Amen. Yeah, and today, that's what we're facing. Today, we're facing what the world says. You know what I hate? And, and, and darn, I hate it even more when, when Christian people say it. They go like, well, I guess that's the new normal. What are you saying? What are you saying? If it's contrary to the word of God, my friend, it is not a new normal. It may be for people in the world that don't know God. It may be for people in the world that don't have a clue. What's going on? But for a believer, you have to say, no, I do not give myself to a new normal that is contrary to the word of God, is contrary to what God says. No. Instead of us just, well, I guess just the, that's the way it is. No, my friend, you're better than that. You have the mind of Christ. Come on. You have the word of God. God has given you his spirit, his word, his kingdom. Come on, somebody. And, and, and so the church, once the church starts going there, we're in trouble. Hello? We're in trouble. All kind of stuff goes on that the media says, yes, yeah, you know, like the whole woke movement. Uh, well, go back to sleep, man. You ain't got nothing to say. Woke from what? 
and we buy into it. Times are changing. Yes, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. So if you want to change with the times, my friend, you're in trouble. Because, don't, don't get me wrong, so maybe we want to change because we want to dress right. I'm not talking about those type of things. I'm talking about the real issues of life. And we decide that we're going to change with the times when God doesn't change. God's word is the same. The Bible says that, that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain forever. This is our anchor. This is the only thing that we have that will tell us what is right and what is wrong. And then you have some people interpreting the Bible in a way that is not right, taking it out of, out of context. And because we don't know what the Bible says, we go, well, oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, you're not hearing me. The church has been getting weak. I've said it before. We never knew what real spiritual warfare was until 2020. Because the idea wasn't the virus. The idea was to change the mindset of everybody, world and church. It's the truth. And it started there and it's still going. They're still pushing stuff that is not biblical. And we're like, well, you know, you have to be. No, my friend. No, -uh -uh. We are the church. We are the ones that have to take a stand. We're the ones that are going to speak the word no matter what happens, what we see or how, how we feel or, come on, or what we see. No, we have to take a stand for the word of God. And you have to take it for yourself. I'm a preacher. There's, I, there's a lot of people that follow me. I speak in huge churches. There's people that come, hey, pastor, this and that and the other. Look, I'm just a man. Come on. I'm just a man. No, no, get your own relationship with God. Well, you're not hearing me. Get your, no, no, there's only one mediator. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. You go to him. You talk to him. Because I can lead you astray. Well, I have to be honest. You know, I don't want that burden. You know, lead, lead people astray and then God says, that's, that's you. Uh-uh. Why do you think I preach the way I do? I, I put the responsibility back on you. It's not my responsibility, my friend. People say, well, the pastor has to take care of the flock. Yes, he has to feed the flock and that's what I'm doing. And that's all I can do. I'm a sower. I sow the seeds. Where is it going to fall? I don't know. Only you know. If your soil is good, which is a soil of faith and believing God, it's going to produce. Come on. And that's what he wants. But I'm not going to put, don't put that on me. I've come, I, I, I've come from, what, in this thing, 40 years, 40 some odd years. You know the abuse I have seen? From pastors who want that kind of power? Oh, you're not hearing me. It's the truth. It turned them into mos monsters. Some of us have left churches that the pastor thought that he was God. You know what I'm talking about. Because they would manipulate the word. They would, they would make it like you had to, you know, if you obey them, you obey God. The only problem is, there's no problem with that, because Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But you better make sure that person is following Christ. You better hear what they're saying. You better hear what they're teaching. Because if they're teaching something weird that is causing them to be the ones that determine your maturity and your growth and so on and so forth, ah. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. I am sick and tired. If you hear me, my frustration, I ain't trying to hide it. <laughs> I'm frustrated, very frustrated because of what I'm seeing. And the sad part is, my friend, that is what people want. Because it's easier for me to say, Woo! I left home today. Woo! power of God was all over me, the annoying thing. And I want to tell you right now, right now, that if you come up and I lay hands on you, 
the anointing is going to come upon you and you're going to be set free of everything. Uh, and people want to believe it. Shoot, I'm glad you're going to do the work. All I got to do is come up. It's what people want. There's churches that are growing by leaps and bounds because of that type of teaching. And what I'm saying is the anointing is inside of you individually. Come on. The power of God is inside of you. You have the kingdom of God inside of you. He is your father. He is your Christ. And whatever you say, come on. Oh, you're not hearing me. But no, why does the church do that? I'm glad you asked. Because the church is lazy. And they would rather follow that. They would rather follow somebody. They'll say, oh, if you give me $1,000, God is going to do this. Oh, well, I'd rather give $1,000 than meditate day and night. It's the truth. You know, let me give this $1,000. It's like, it's like, Lord, help me. And, and, and the church falls for that. So there's some people that come to a church and they don't like it. They get offended because I go like, you know what? You got it. You do it. And just like Jesus said to the disciples, hey, how are we going to feed all these people? You feed them. That offends a lot of people. Pastor, can you pray and, and fast with me? I'm fasting 40 days. Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Talking about, you know, but you know what? I, I, will, I will agree with you, but you do it. Come on. It falls on you, not on me. I don't have it like that. Thank God I don't have it like that. And some people go like, look at that pastor, how he felt. Right, because people put him up there. Yeah, you want to blame him now, but you followed him, gave him your money, did all that kind of stuff. Oh, come on. You, you. <laughs> it's the truth. And then you have all those people saying, yep, forget about it. Church ain't right. <laughs> church ain't right. Uh-uh. All kind of stuff happening. Church is on pastors going crazy and so on. It's our fault. Because instead of us operating by the Christ in us, we put our trust and we do all of that to man. They don't know how to handle it. They become corrupt because of the power and the money. Oh, you are here. You know, when the pastor fell from New York from, what was that, 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 that church, that group? The, the, we sing the songs. Hills, thank you. When that pastor fell in New York, man, everybody got all over him. They have a documentary just whooping him down, this and that and the other. But don't you realize that you're the one that built that monster? By telling him he's the best, by telling him that, you know, God, this and that and the other. You know, yeah, okay, God uses me, absolutely, but he can use you too. The fact of the matter is he can use you more than me. That's why Jesus said Jesus wasn't threatened. He told the disciples, hey, you think this is something? Greater works will you do. I don't know about that, man. You done raised the dead and everything. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like Jesus was saying, well, only I can do this. That's why he was blown away when Peter got out the boat and walked on water. He was ecstatic because he said, wow, finally somebody got it. Instead of looking at me and saying, wow, look at Jesus. No, he went out there and did it because that's what he wants. That is true discipleship. True discipleship is to want uh, uh, to equip people to do better than you. Amen. Yeah, even, well, 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 well. I'm going to close with this verse. But before I do, let me give you some instruction. Is that good? At some point today, 
I want you to grab a pad or your iPad, whatever, and write five things that you are grateful for. That, that deserved at least an amen. Yeah. Why, why is that important? And this is the other thing. You know, a lot of times the Bible is instructive, so it gives us instructions every day. People just want to hear it. They don't want to follow the instruction. Like I said, I'm not that smart. I don't have it like that. If we're talking about this, it's because Holy Spirit wants to impart this to us. Write down five things. It's the very beginning of turning around what you say. Because if what you say can be destructive or it can be a blessing, it, 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 we need to take that seriously. How many times that somebody will say, write down 10 problems. And then they turn it in, it's like 40. Because <laughs> it's easier to focus on the problems. Write five things that you are grateful for. You can start by life itself. I woke up this morning. I have life. Come on, somebody. And every day after today, jot down another five or three or two. It doesn't matter if it's one. You just have to keep it going. And you're going to find out, my friend, that there's more to be grateful for than to be complaining about. It's the truth. Amen? And watch how that will start. Being grateful attracts blessings. So when, when they said, you know, he said, you feed them. He said, we don't have, we, we don't have the means to. He said, what do you have? Uh, five loaves, two fish. He said, bring it to me. What did he do? He blessed it where you and I will go like, Wow, it's going to take a lot of money to do that. All I have is $7. Forget about it. I don't have enough. Are you hearing me? Why? Because you're focusing on what you don't have instead of being thankful of what you do have. And so when he gave thanks, the miracle happened. Come on. When he was grateful that we had five loaves and two fish while you're complaining about it. I'm giving the Father thanks for it and watch the miracle happen. So I'm going to close with this verse. Revelations chapter 12, verse 11. They triumphed over him, who? The enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. I'm going to read this again. They triumphed over him, or the word is overcame. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb, and here it is, by the word of their testimony. The blood he did, the word we do. Are you here? You, you just don't go like, I have the victory by the blood of Jesus. Huh? You know. No, 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 my friend. What is your testimony? What are you saying? Because you only have part of it, part of that truth. The other part is that the blood of Christ has freed you, has, come on, has taken away your sin. What is your testimony? And it's not just talking about a testimony, you know, praise the Lord, I want to share a testimony. I was walking down the street, found a hundred dollars, and God knows I needed it. It's not talking about that. That's, I mean, good. You know, if you want to share something encouraging, good. There's no problem. But it's not talking about that. He's talking about the testimony of your relationship with God, the testimony of His Word in your life. We overcame by what? The blood of the Lamb. And the word of my testimony. And you have the right to testify correctly and to say the truth because of the blood of the Lamb. The word overcame, because these translations, the word overcame means to subdue, to conquer, and to prevail. How do you prevail, my friend? His blood was already shed. 
How do you prevail? By the word of your testimony. What are you saying? What are you saying? When you're alone, what are you saying? Because realize that, that, that words, you can talk to yourself all day right here. They're still words. Are you following me? What are you saying? What are you saying when you look in the mirror? What do you say about yourself? Come on. What do you say about your family? What do you say about your friends? What are you saying about your money? What are you saying about your health? What are you saying? Because, you know, I can say, I can say things. Hey, you're a winner. Hey. No, no, but what are you saying? And that's why it was important for Jesus when he said, who do people say that I am? Well, some say you're a prophet. Some say you're Elijah. No, 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 no. But what do you, who do you say I am? Stop telling me what, what you hear. I want to know what you believe in and what you know and what you're saying. What are you saying? It's something to think about. It's something to really think about. Because remember, if you're saying the wrong things, it's a trap. And it's affecting your life. I guarantee you, friends, that things will turn around in a New York minute. And I'm from New York. I know that's fast. When you change what you say and you start meditating on the word of God, stop speaking the problem. Stop speaking the challenges and speak the word. You will see and be grateful. Just be grateful. Be grateful. You know, it used to tear me up years ago because I wanted like a thousand people, 1,500 people. And I would complain to God, oh, this handful of people, and you've given me this message. This message is for the masses. Well, that's why he has me travel. Really. But man, I used to get. What does the word piss mean? I, I, said, I mean, I used to say it all the time. I don't know what it means. Uh, angry. Really. See, some religious folks are like, oh my God, how can he say that? <laughs> Listen. And I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the people that come. I'm grateful that you show up and you get up Sunday morning and you go like, man, I'm going to church. I'm grateful. And I will preach the same if there's five people here or a thousand. Right, because I'm just grateful that God trusts me enough to share his word. I'm grateful. Last, last Sunday, was it? Or the Sunday before? I think Sunday before. Or even before that, I shared about the feast of, of Pentecost. And I shared how all those people would walk miles and miles and miles to bring their offering, to bring the wheat. They would get their camels or whatever they had. They would put that stuff on and they would walk for miles to get to Jerusalem because of the Feast of Pentecost. And you would ask yourself, why would they do that? One answer, my friend. Because they were grateful for the provision and the blessing of God. To them, it was nothing to walk all that way. They wanted to show their gratitude to their father, their provider. If we ever give, my friend, it shouldn't be because of pressure. It shouldn't be because, you know, well, this and that and the other. No. If you ever give, your giving has to come from a grateful heart. Grateful that he gave to us first. We didn't give to him first. Grateful that he's still keeping us. And remember, that will change what you say. It will change your life. And today we're going to receive the offering. And all I'm going to say to you, if you're grateful to God, 
Somebody says, well, I just have enough. Be grateful for that because you have more than the ones that don't have enough. And if you're grateful and you're thankful, he will multiply it. And if we can't give because we're grateful, we'll never give. It doesn't matter if John the Baptist showed up here and told you to give. You wouldn't do it because an ungrateful heart can never give. But when you're grateful, you give. And you don't measure it. If you have a dollar to give, you give it because you're grateful. And if you have a thousand dollars to give, you give it because you're grateful. And so I'm going to ask you, just take a moment and let's pray. Father, we thank you. We're so grateful to you. You're a loving God. You're a God that has kept us. You're a God that has blessed us. You're a God that has healed us. And there's so much more. You're equipping us today to access life and more abundant. And so we thank you for that. Now when we give, let us get in touch with a grateful heart for what you've done and all that is coming our way now that is upon us now. And we thank you, Father, that you will multiply every gift according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know how we do. If you're giving online, you got the info. Amen. But if you're giving by check or cash, um, the ushers are handing out the envelopes. And when you, um, when you take care of that, you got the buckets up here. These buckets are anointed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You can just drop it in there. If you're giving by, by, by way of um, Cash App or text or Zelle, you, you know the drill. Amen. Um, listen, would, uh, if you're part of the dream team, and even if you're not part of the dream team, but you want to be, would, right after service, we're going to meet in that room right there um, half hour. Half hour, that's it. I'm going to share some things with you, and then we're off. Amen? And don't forget the men's meeting next Wednesday. By the way, if you're going to come, and you should come, invite a friend, a co-worker, whoever it is. It might be a blessing to them. Amen? Why don't you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and don't stop me from, uh, don't let me stop you from coming up here if you need to. Amen. This is not, not this proper protocol. It's, we just go with it. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, you are our helper. And we're going to need your help as we start transitioning from speaking death to speaking life transitioning from speaking the problem to speaking the answer you will help us you will remind us you will cause us to stop and to cancel negative seed so that we might plant the proper seed the seed of the word of God I thank you father for everyone here for everyone watching on YouTube and Facebook live they have the opportunity to do the same. We will be grateful to you and thankful to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. 